Last week in Community Bible Chapel, we celebrated Rachel Forsberg's retirement and her 30 years of service here as our custodian. Uh, you know, every one of those years was preparation. Preparation for a thousand years of service that Rachel has to look forward to during Jesus' kingdom to come. Our present service here on earth is preparation for our kingdom service. Our faithfulness now dictates the extent of our future role in serving Christ for a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. What will we be doing during Christ's kingdom? What will we be doing during the thousand years when Jesus will rule on this earth? Last week, we went to heaven. We saw what we would be doing now if we went to heaven. But that's not our final stop. In fact, it may be quite brief. For seven years, maybe. During the Great Tribulation. And then the Lord's going to come back with us and we're going to reign with Him on this earth for a thousand years. So, I want to answer some questions. Who will be reigning with Him? When will we be reigning with Him? Where will we be reigning with Him? What will we be doing? And so what? And we've already really answered all those, but let's look a little more in depth. And I trust God this morning, this time when you're listening to this, will be stirring and encouraging you be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, guide us for your glory in the study and practice of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. So who? Who is going to be serving with Christ during the millennial kingdom? Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. It mentions here the first resurrection. There are two basic resurrections mentioned in the Bible. There is the earlier resurrection that has many stages to it, which is a resurrection to life. And there's also a resurrection of dead people, a later one, after the millennial kingdom. A resurrection to death. Daniel talks about this in Daniel chapter 12. In verse 2, many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. The first and second resur uh, resurrection. The second is to death and separation from God. The end of verse 5 here in Revelation 20, this is the uh, first resurrection. Uh, but the beginning says the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were completed. Uh, those people who, after the millennial saints are resurrected, uh, the rest of the dead will be resurrected. Uh, death. In Revelation 
20 talks about this in verses 11 to 15. In verse 14, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. If you're born once and only once, you're going to die twice. Your physical death here on earth and then your body is going to be resurrected and reunited with your soul and the second death is to eternal lake of fire and separation from God. As the first death does not occur to everyone at the same time, neither will the first resurrection. I want to be in the first resurrection to life. And that comes through simply trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior from sin. Have you done that? Have you trusted in Him? The first resurrection to life occurs in various stages over a large portion of time. If you've got uh, the notes uh, that are on the website, you'll see that there are several arrows pointing up that this earlier resurrection occurs in many different stages. Christ, he was bodily resurrected after his crucifixion on the third day. Uh, he's the first fruits of those to come. Uh, the church of Jesus Christ that's us who believe in Him in this age. There's going to be a day when Christ will come and those who have died as Christians, their bodies will be resurrected, united with their souls. And then we who are alive and remain at that point in history to come, we will be caught up in, and our bodies will be turned from natural bodies to supernatural bodies. That's the rapture. That's our resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection during the tribulation period that's to come of two witnesses that will be killed and then come back to life and taken up to heaven. Uh, after the tribulation period, those martyrs during the tribulation period will have their bodies resurrected, reunited with those souls, praising God in heaven. That is another resurrection, a part of the first resurrection. Uh, and also after the tribulation, before the millennial kingdom, the Old Testament saints like Daniel will come back to life, be reassembled, reunited with their souls so that they can enjoy ruling in the kingdom to some extent, in some way, as well. And after the kingdom, those who die during the kingdom as believers in Jesus will need to be resurrected to go into the eternal state. Just as Jesus bodily, excuse me, resurrected, or he had, you know, his same hands side but it was now in an incorruptible state so will we be in our resurrection if we believe in Jesus Christ to trust in him today if you haven't already so that's a little bit of who those are the first resurrection who have believed in Christ for Thessalonians 4:14 believe that Jesus died and rose again for them. Now, when will this take place? We see it's going to be after the tribulation as things go from chapter 19 on in basic order here uh, and before the millennium, before the thousand years. Uh, blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Just to review, you know, these time periods. So we are in the church age. 
when the rapture comes, Jesus will meet us in the clouds and we will be resurrected uh, to be with Jesus. And we will be with Jesus until the end of the tribulation period. And then we will come with him with the armies of heaven for the bride of Christ coming. With all those hallelujahs. And Jesus will land on the Mount of Olives this time. And he will judge the Antichrist and his armies. Send Satan to the bottomless pit, chained for a thousand years. And then we will rule with Christ. Um, my goodness. So, um, the number here, a thousand years. Uh, numbers in Revelation are to be taken in a normal way. Uh, seven churches means seven actual churches that existed in the time that John wrote this. Um, 42 months is three and a half years. 1260 days is three and a half years. Uh, those are numbers we take literally. And six times in Revelation 20, we see this thousand years mentioned to underscore that that's how long it is. That we'll be on earth. Where? On earth. Oh, by the way, preview to next week, we look at the eternal state. If you look in Revelation 22 and verse 5, this is part of this when will we rule? We will rule during the millennium. But Revelation 22, 5 talks about the eternal state in the new Jerusalem here on earth, a new earth. There will no longer be any night, and they will not have need of the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will illumine them, and they will reign forever and ever. Oh, what a wonderful thing that is. So what we're seeing here that we're going to be doing in the millennium is going to be similar to what we will do forever in the New Jerusalem. Where are we going to serve? Well, this thousand year period that we're going to serve, we're going to be back here on Earth. Uh, planet Earth is going to be around for a while then. So don't panic about our Earth and it's dying. Uh, we've got a seven year tribulation period to come. We've got a thousand years of Jesus and us ruling on this earth. It's going to be around. And heaven then is not our final stop. When Christ comes back, we will come back with him to be here again, enjoying like a superior and the mountains and the forests and the rivers the oceans, planet Earth. Um, and as I mentioned, when Christ comes back, uh, he is going to defeat Satan. And the kingdoms of this world that the Antichrist has reigned over and trying to establish a one world government that won't work, those kingdoms will become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. And He will reign forever and ever. And Revelation 5, verse 10, talks about what will be happening to believers who are resurrected. Um, those purchased from oh, every tribe, tongue, people, and ethnos. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God and they will reign on the earth. And we are going to reign. If we suffer with him, Paul says, we will reign with him. Uh, and there will be a need for rulers. The uh, survivors of the tribulation period that come in now to the kingdom, uh, which they will need someone to rule, to guide, to administrate. There will be potholes that will 
need to be filled. Uh, there will be conflicts that will need to be resolved. And I'm not sure how many people will be believers and survivors at the end of the tribulation. I know all of Israel will turn to Christ and be saved. But what's going to happen to these first inhabitants of the kingdom that Jesus will say to the nations, come, enter the kingdom that I have prepared for you. What will happen to them is they will multiply like crazy. <clears throat> In this perfect uh, situation, uh, we find that vegetation is going to grow, farming will be productive, Israel will be gathered to its promised land. The lamb will lay down with the wolf and all those kind of things and the lion and oh, it's amazing. Uh, but let me go to one verse, Isaiah chapter 65 in verse 20, Isaiah 65, 20. Uh, and my, my point here is that there's going to be a lot of people populating planet Earth after the tribulation because of multiplication. Uh, no longer will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days. Or an old man who does not live out his days. For the youth will die at the age of 100. And the one who does not reach the age of 100 will thought to be accursed. They will build houses and inhabit them. And it goes on and talks about the wolf and the lamb grazing together and a lion will eat straw with the ox. Wow. In a productive time, uh, human beings will be productive as well and there will be multitudes and billions and billions and they will need administration and we will be able to help them with that. So that's where, which then leads to, you know, what will we be doing? Revelation 20 verse 6, they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6 as he talks to Christians, he has made us to be a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, a kingdom is the idea that, that we will have what David had, and Saul had, kingdom to, to rule over. It's amazing. Uh, God is so gracious. So there's two things that we'll be doing for sure during the millennium as faithful followers of Christ in this age. One is to serve as priests, similar to what we saw last week that we'll be doing in heaven, praising God, petitioning God. But let me add another, a third now, that we'll be doing during the millennium, is proclaiming God. Um, how will we be serving as priests to these people who are entering into the kingdom? Um, we find that um, Satan be bound, people be multiplying, but every person born into a believing family to begin with will have to accept Jesus for their own as Lord and Savior, and some will not. And what will be needed for every child born into the kingdom is to hear the good news that Jesus the King is also their Savior if they take Him as that. To deliver them from the second death. To forgive them of sin. And, um, well, let's go to Isaiah 52 to see what we might be doing. And well, I guess what we, would, we will be doing during the kingdom because we will be priests. One of the things a priest does is represent 
God to the rest of the people. We will be God's representatives as we serve His Son Christ. And we will be there to tell these people about Jesus, the good news, so they might be saved. Isaiah 52 is in the context of the coming millennial kingdom. And it says, How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace, shalom, well-being, and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation, and says to Zion, Your God reigns when Jesus will be reigning from Mount Zion. Jerusalem on the throne of David. We will be his priest spreading the news that he is our Savior. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As priests we will be praising, petitioning and proclaiming. And that's what we're to be practicing now. This last week when you had a a little bit of down time or waiting for something, for a phone call, for a traffic light. I hope you use that time to praise, to petition, or to proclaim. That's what Christ wants. So, there's priestly service, and it really encourages me when I hear that people are sharing Jesus with others. The reason most of us are here today is someone shared with us. Now, the main thing to answer the question, what will we be doing in the kingdom, is that we're going to be ruling with Jesus. Oh, we will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. In Matthew 1928, uh, Jesus promised his apostles that uh, in light of the fact that they have left families and jobs to follow him, God will give them many times more and they will rule over the 12 tribes of Israel and to all who sacrifice in this age. Uh, God has blessings for us related to the same kind of thing they are to ruling uh, in the millennial kingdom um, and it's going to be a wonderful wonderful time to do it because uh, as we know from Isaiah chapter 9 Jesus will be the main ruler uh, there will be no end to the increase of his government or peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it with justice and righteous. And we will be doing his work in spreading that justice around the world. We will be the political leaders and there will be world peace. Um, there's going to be a need for city supervisors in talking about Jesus coming uh, by, as the master to reward his servants. He talks about a faithful servant. When the master comes, he will say to him, you will be in charge of ten cities. Well, we have one. We have ten it relates to our faithfulness and using what God has given to us now. We will also be settling disputes. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 is one verse on our future rule. Uh, Paul tells the church that was squabbling and taking each other to the pagan courts to sue them, he, he says you should do it before the saints. Do you not know that the saints 
will judge the world. See, we Christians, that's who he's referring to as saints here. One day we will be the judges of the world. So we ought to be able to arbitrate and settle disputes among ourselves today. Practice. For what we're going to be doing as judges, as rulers, as kings and queens during the millennial kingdom. We will reward the righteous, sentence the wicked, because people will still have a sin nature. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be priests and we will be rulers. Which leads to the practical part. So what? So what? Since the level of our ruling in the future, since the extent of our ruling, whether it's one city or ten, is based on our faithfulness to what God gives us here today. And we need to be faithful people. Uh, Matthew 25 and verse 21, another parable Jesus told related to his coming back to rule. Uh, the master says to the slave, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Oh, what God wants us to do. What will bring joy to Jesus is the few things God's given us here to do now that we're faithful in. And then oh, he will give us much. And that will rejoice him because we've honored him here. We will get to show that honor in the future by our promotion coming. Uh, some more verses related to us being faithful now. 1 Corinthians in chapter 3. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. Each man's work that we do on this in this age will become evident. For the day will show it because it will be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. Let's be faithful. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. If we endure, we will also reign with him. Staying true to Christ. Loyal. And also uh, being victorious over temptation uh, will merit us the opportunity to rule. Uh, Revelation here in chapter 2 and verse 26. Revelation 2, 26. He who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. Revelation 3.21, He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame. What motivation to be overcomers, to be victors over temptation. So our experience, expertise that God has given us to develop here is just practice and a proving ground for what he wants us to be doing in the kingdom to come. What does that mean? Well, this is my understanding. 
the raising of our children that God's given us to do. Through love and instruction, consistent discipline, mediating quarrels and affirming their sacrifices is preparing us for kingdom rule. The business skills that you use to help your family and church will be utilized on a bigger stage in the kingdom. Your witnessing skills that have been honed for speaking to family and friends will be utilized further in the kingdom. Your building skills that you have modeled for others to learn construction from will be multiplied in the kingdom. Your gardening insights and hard work prepare you for overseeing productive kingdom farming. Your healthy recipes can be passed on to millions. Your insights in repairing machines will be needed to train mechanics for the kingdom. Your faithful musical service for God today might be a reason to promote you to train musicians to play before the King of Kings in Jerusalem. To the degree we are faithful with the talents God has given us here, to that degree they will be multiplied in the kingdom. Last December I was nervous. Becky had to have surgery. She had to have an oncologist do it because there was a chance they would find cancer. And just before that, we were sitting at home in our recliners, and I was nervous about this soon surgery. Becky had her earbuds in, and she was listening to music. And she was content. She was listening to a song, Well Done. Welcome to the home prepared for you. Are we ready? Have we been faithful? Let's pray. God, help us to be faithful, to be victors for Jesus. Amen.